In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out 
her servant girls, she calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be careful how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making music to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The, name, the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the people, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The people then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that that your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread Live, will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Today's first reading from the Book of Proverbs pictures Lady Wisdom building a home, a perfect home with seven pillars slaughtering her animals, mixing her wine, setting up her tables, and sending out servants to call people to it. And at the end of it, the words that is why this reading is matched with today's gospel. Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine that I have mixed. It leads us into the final section of chapter 6 of John's gospel the bread of life discourse. The first verse that I read today is the last verse that I read last week. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. That's summing up the whole of what has gone before us over the past couple of weeks. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. That was part of the theme of the middle section of chapter 6 in John's Gospel and then it changed. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And so it's only in verse 51 that we start a switch from speaking just of bread to speaking of flesh. The people pick up on it. They dispute among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And so they're taking him quite literally whether or not they believe it possible. So he says to them, very truly I tell you, again an expression used so often in John's Gospel, and whenever it is used, it means pay attention. This is really important. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And so now Jesus speaks not just of his flesh, but also of his blood. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. He's linking back to the theme of living forever with his flesh and with his blood and the eating and drinking of them. And I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Jesus is leaving no doubt about what he intends. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. 
and then finally he brings it back to where it all started. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus spoke these words in preparation for what he intended to do at the Last Supper when he said over the bread, take, eat, this is my body. And over the cup of blessing, the wine, take, drink, this is my blood. The blood of a new and an eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. And then gave them the command, do this in memory of me. And from the earliest acts of the apostles, we read that that's exactly what they did. They did in memory of Jesus what he had done at the Last Supper. And from our earliest writings, following on this passage and elsewhere in St. Paul and the words of Jesus himself, whenever the Eucharist comes up, the Catholic authors make it absolutely clear that our Catholic faith is that Jesus meant exactly what he said. That even though our eyes cannot understand it, and our senses cannot understand it, that after the consecration, the bread becomes the body of Christ, and the wine becomes his blood. And not only in the earliest ages, but all the way through Christian history, that has been the faith of the Church Catholic. It's why we treat the Eucharist with such great respect why a whole liturgy has grown up around it, why priests are not just free to do whatever they want, but they're bound by the liturgy of the church, which is bound by the tradition of the church, why we keep the consecrated sacrament also in the tabernacle, available for the sick and available for private prayer. This is the great gift that Christ gives us in the Eucharist, a gift that is so well prepared for, and Jesus is teaching in chapter 6 of John's Gospel. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And together we place all of our needs and all of our prayers before God, our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis and for all who are preparing for the Synod to be held in October in Rome, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Christian, and the youth of our diocese who are gathering at Villa Madonna this weekend, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our children and grandchildren, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young men and women, that they may might use these last days of summer to consider that God may be calling them to a vocation in the priesthood or religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For volunteers and workers who assist the poor and homeless, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For health care works and caregivers who comfort and heal the sick and the dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Madeline Frawley, Serafina Matina, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We bring our needs and our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them and to answer them through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And please be seated while our offertory is gathered. And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, 
as without end we are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. And drink this cup, we proclaim the death of Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Arnold and Teresa Dobson and baby Reese Bercy, Robert Como, Doreen Gilbert, Robert Godet, Sally Cusack, Anthony McGuire, and all of the deceased members of each of their families. 
Grant that though they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.